Considering Spider-Man is a series that's gained quite a pedigree in its film series, no, not those ones. I didn't get my hopes up for the new reboot of the series in the form of Spider-Man Homecoming. However, I was pleasantly surprised when I did in fact watch the movie on release and really enjoyed both Tom Holland's performance and the movie as a whole. What? So many people are already saying that Homecoming is the best Spider-Man film ever made, though quite a few would actually say that Spider-Man 2 from the Sam Raimi trilogy is better. And I must say I also love this film, particularly it's so close to my heart, I grew up with this film, and Tobey Maguire did a really good job as Spider-Man, but I thought for comic book month, what better chance would we have to talk about the video game based on the movie, which I've heard is actually pretty good. So without further ado, let's dive in. Oh look, Treyarch! I wonder what they've been up to. Booting the game up, I love how there's no long drawn out intro. We get some exposition, and there we go. I'm Spider-Man. No later than about a minute into the game and we're already having fun. We get to fly around the city straight away, and as an added bonus, Bruce Campbell narrates the mechanics of the game. Remember him in the movies? Hello. Well, because he's a childhood friend of Sam Raimi, he was in all three movies and games. Man, we've only just unpacked this game and I'm impressed. Even at a first glance, there's a lot in this game in the vast, sprawling concrete jungle of Manhattan, which is massive. We even get the actors of Peter Parker, MJ and Doc Ock reprising their roles in the game. No James Franco, though. To pass the time at the start of the game, we get to fight crime on a street level in traditional, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man fashion. Don't let them get the case. Give us the case and you won't get hurt! <laughs> I got her! Whoa! Whoa! No! Some, someone's about to fall! Help! You silly bugger, how'd you get up there? Never mind, hang on for a minute, I'll save you. Menace. Whoops. The game makes us juggle story missions as both Spider-Man and Peter Parker, similar to the Raimi trilogy, and for the most part it breaks up the action of the game. We even get cinematics that parallel important segments of the film. In fact, some of them are even shot-for-shot -shot replicas. However, this game is not a complete retelling of the story from the movie. A good two-thirds of the game revolve around other side plots and characters we never even see in the movie. Plus, we also get supplemental side missions such as delivering pizza, Despite the fact that Peter gets fired right at the start of the movie. Who cares? Pizza song! <laughs> As we get stronger and buy more upgrades, crime gets tougher to face. Starting with... Painting Robbers. The combat's pretty rubbish despite the variety of combos and abilities, and the action is definitely a large stalemate to the otherwise fantastic web slinging throughout the city. You got nice moves for a dork in tights. Oh look! A minx! The game also includes stable villains and anti-heroes that add more to the overarching Spidey Doc Ock Nemesis story. There are 15 missions in total and each requires a set amount of hero points to unlock. We get hero points by completing missions, helping people in need, finding collectibles, and stopping petty crimes. That means we need to do little tasks regularly in order to progress through the story, which starts off pretty good, but eventually can get very tedious. Here's a few examples of what we can do. Spidey, I think the police are chasing someone. A car just came through here going way too fast. Didn't your mom tell you not to hit girls? You're going to hurt someone. Not to mention that we even get a nice change of pace with segments like the fake Spider-Man gauntlet run by Quentin Beck, or the rooftop chase sequences with Black Cat. Plus the Shocker makes a few brief appearances. Hmm... He looks familiar. These characters tend to make regular appearances in the build-up to Doc Ock concerning pacing his development gradually. 
But Black Cat in particular also acts as a yin to Spider-Man's yang in terms of his wants and needs as a character, and Quentin Beck evolves from himself to Mysterio, which gives us a whole new aspect of the game to explore. Mysterio's House of Clowns and the Statue of Liberty segment are particularly good. However, when Doc Ock arrives, things get very rapidly annoying. Such as his first level where we have to push four buttons in a room, pulsing with a force field which can knock off a quarter of your health and has an erratic attack pattern to remember. Black Cat's roof jumping missions also get way more difficult as time goes on, and the platforming's reliance on multiple mechanics being done with the same two to three buttons makes it easy to make a mistake and completely mess up your run. Though other than that, the game does tend to stay at a fair level of difficulty despite some nasty moments. Oh look, Mysterio! Got any more robot aliens to fight? I will destroy you utterly! You will bear witness to the majesty and glory of my power! Prepare to die! You have trifled with my power for the last- You- <laughs> Whoa! That was sick, dude! You rock so hard, Spidey! No. Oh, uh. I I give up. Don't don't hit me again. <laughs> that was amazing. Though I'm pretty sure we've seen that somewhere before. The shocker also gets a rather fiddly but not too difficult battle, and the last black cat chase is a massively annoying, torturous ordeal. Though thankfully it leads to a breakup. Then finally at this point the game starts to really embrace Doc Ock and the game's relevance to the film. You're only five hours late, pal. I must admit it's well done in building anticipation to the big bad himself, though the combat mechanics aren't endearing. The train fight's alright, I mean even if you fall off at least you have some room to manoeuvre, but the final battle is incredibly annoying. Let me set the scene. To when you first have to press several buttons, remember those? Doc Ock will also attack you and get this. He doesn't have a health bar. Know why? Because he's got a shield! <laughs> Plus the pulsing force field is back. It doesn't do much damage, but it's still a massive pain in the balls! Plus get this, one of the buttons is below the floorboards next to a large drop filled with... water! And if you fall in, you're dead! Done! Start again! Plus the button is on a wall, so it's really easy to fall off. Plus the force field tends to push you in. And if that fails, there's always the good doctor himself to ease you into! WHY THE HELL IS THIS IN THE GAME?! However with that done, we finally complete the game, ending in much the same way as the film. Plus, if you want to play more of the game after you finish the last battle, you can look for more collectibles, fight more crime, or just swing around the place. Hey, congratulations. Welcome to part two. Hey, Bruce is back. So there we have Spider-Man 2 for the original Xbox. It's a game with a lot of ups and downs, but overall, I really enjoyed it. I think the biggest hurdle for this game is the fact that the beginning is somewhat slow, but also it's very clunky compared to modern games. So if you're not accustomed to going back and playing older titles like this, you may have trouble. But I like how, as you play, you get more upgrades to buy which make you faster, which make going through the Manhattan streets and cityscape really fun and thrilling, just swinging about like Spider-Man himself. The biggest letdown for this game is obviously the combat and some of the boss fights. Some of them are okay, some of them are just mediocre, but there aren't really many that are just like, wow, that was a great boss fight. And all the game's criminals and thugs and just normal enemies really bring the game down compared to other games that we've played with smoother combat like the Arkham series or even just any beat-em-up game you've ever played, even old games. The combat in this game just doesn't do it any favours. I did really overall enjoy this game but there were several times where my sanity just went through a couple of phases where I was tearing my hair out doing a specific boss fight or a sequence or a chase bit or delivering pizzas. It's quite stressful after you know you failed a mission of five or six or thirty times and you know what to do but the game's mechanics or just the way it's set up with the challenge 
really, really, really agitates you. But I gotta say, for a game this old, I am so impressed with how much it got done with the huge cityscape, the variety of missions, and just the way it all fit together. I was surprised with how much there was in this game, and I loved seeing different villains and anti-heroes and other characters from the Spider-Man franchise included in this game, which didn't even need to be there, but it really did show so much passion and care for the project, and I can't fault it for that. So if you can get past some of the clunkier moments and the rough edges of this game, I think you'll enjoy it too. I certainly did, and it's now one of the best superhero games I have ever played. And I still realise that a lot of people today think this is the best, or one of the best, superhero games ever made out there. And I can see why. But either way, that was Spider-Man 2 for the original Xbox. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next week we'll be having a look at another superhero game of a very different nature, with a very different superhero. But until then, I'll see you guys later. This was a stupid idea. I can barely breathe. Flatten my nose. I can't see anything. Let me out. I'm Spider-Man.